What's going on guys? Brandon here with Texas Plinking. If you guys follow me on Instagram, you've already seen Desert Eagle number three. This one is a bit different than the other ones you've seen before. This is what they call the L5, which doesn't totally distinguish what caliber it's chambered in, but it happens to be in 357 Magnum. I'm not gonna go total forgotten weapons here, but a little bit of history with the Desert Eagle. We, from modern cultures, people my age, who play a little bit of Call of Duty, know the Desert Eagle as the 50 cal, the 50 Action Express, the, it, the 50 AE. It started its life actually as a 357, uh, which at the time was absurd to think that you can chamber an auto loader, not a revolver, um, and a 357, a Magnum cartridge in general. Later on, they developed a 44, which was awesome as, as well. Um, there was another one I forgot the name of, but then eventually the 50 AE came out in a lot of movies and uh, you know, depiction in video games. Pick that up for our culture. The L5 is a more lightweight version. It has these really deep flutes in the barrel. If you pop the barrel out, um, you're, there's even deeper flutes underneath. The safety lever, if I go ahead and get a close up there, you see it has like that hole in the safety lever. If that saves anything, great. And then I don't want to point it right at the camera, so I'll get some B-roll later. Um, quite a bit of porting right by the muzzle, as well as this has an integral muzzle brake. The other two 50 cals I have do not have that. So what we have is a big old frame, like a Desert Eagle, feels very familiar, but way lighter because the frame's actually aluminum uh, on the L5, saves even more weight. And we have a compensator and it's 357. So it barks like a really, really, really big dog, but really kicks kind of like a nine mil. And for my next trick, Before we shoot some more, I almost forgot to mention, uh, this video is sponsored by Snore and Desert Institute, a very long time supporter of the channel. I can't thank them enough. Snore and Desert Institute or SDI, I'll put a link in the description to check them out. If you guys want to get any kind of uh, certifications and learn anything about gunsmithing, ballistics, shooting sports management, anything in the shooting industry, you guys can make a career out of subject. You can get your start with Snore and Desert Institute. They have several different funding options available as well. So again, link in the description, check them out. Very appreciative for them helping out the channel. Anyway, let's shoot the 357 L5 a little bit more. I totally forgot to count, so I don't know how it was how hot loaded, but uh, that's pretty relieving to see it shoot that well, and I'll tell you why. Typically on this channel, especially with a gun like this, we just shoot recreationally. I don't really do analytical reviews. I still won't. But there's one thing I feel I have to mention based off of my experience with this gun. The reason I said it was relieving to see it work that well is because initially I didn't know what 357 Magnum it would, or what ammo it would like. So I had like three different kinds of brands, a little bit of Blazer and some other stuff. I forgot all of them. Some of them wouldn't cycle at all. Another one seemed to cycle, but it was like so potent. It was kind of throwing crap back in my face. I figured, eh, maybe it's breaking. And eventually, this is not on any other fault other than my own, but good on Magnum Research. The Blazer stuff was shooting way too hot to where eventually the gas piston broke. Um, so we wouldn't cycle, obviously. And I was a little bummed out about that. I didn't know why that would happen. I contacted Magnum Research. They said, hey, you know what? Why don't you just send the entire gun just for precaution? And literally by the time I sent it out, it was no more than three or four business days. It was back to me. Uh, and they had confirmed that it was only the gas uh, valve that needed to be changed, but they wanted to do a once over and test fire it. I then, while in those four days, I was wondering, well, how do I prevent this from happening in the future? If you plan on getting this gun, I think you'll be very happy, but just do the due diligence and it's pretty easy. Magnum Research has a list of ammo they recommend for 357. And that makes sense, because if you're shooting other 357 from a revolver, wheeled guns are tough. It's gonna contain that explosion on an auto loader it's a little bit more finicky. So one of them, I mean, it's kind of tough to find ammo in general right now. I went on Gunbroker and honestly kind of overpaid, but one of the recommended ones was the Federal 158 uh, grain uh, JSP rounds. We've only shot one hot loaded mag on that and uh, it felt way better. Recoil was way more tame. I wasn't getting crap in the face and it obviously locked back and did fine. That's one mag, let's keep running that same ammo. But if you're gonna get this gun or even the 44, uh, just check out the website for the recommended list of ammo so you don't have to send it off. But even if you do, Magnum Research took care of it and I never told him who I was with the channel in case that matters. So good on Magnum Research. I really appreciate that kind of service. We're not hot loading this one, but that is now a fully loaded mag. Let's shoot some steel real quick. Where'd that go? There we go. Yeah. 
Yeah. Let's go silhouette on the right. Woo. That feels good, man. Something about a familiar grip of a Desert Eagle, but it's just taming that recoil like nothing else. It's just, it's like a nine mil, really, that it's barking like a true 357. That's really, really cool. Nice. This thing feels good. Ah, you see, if you were eating a cookie with your left hand, could you then easily handle the 357 Desert Eagle with one? I think so. Not as effective, but very delicious. Oh no. It's done for today. I wish I had better news. We're having a ball with it. I pretty much was just about to wrap up the video. We're getting some slow motion B-roll. In fact, I think I have enough to call it a wrap with this video, but we wanted to shoot just a little bit more. And same old problem, that little gas valve had snapped. I don't like to get too analytical and somber, Dang, this is unfortunate. And you know what? Hat's gonna have to come off here. What's unfortunate is I can just tell this is such a freaking cool gun and a cool plinker because it's a 357 Desert Eagle. It sounds awesome, it feels awesome when it's shooting. But here's the problem, guys. The little gas valve thing just had snapped to where it wasn't feeding and it would get lodged right here so it would have a gap right here because this thing just snapped and got stuck there. <sighs> Which is too bad. But I mean, they took care of it once already and I thought that was at the fault of my own because I was shooting other ammo that wasn't recommended. This is straight on their website as a recommendation and we had that happen. So I don't have the spring in there just because I just wanted to eject something that was in the barrel, but to take it apart real quick. Everything looks okay and healthy. It's a little scuffed right here, a little scuffed right here, but for the most part, I'll probably just need another one of these. That's anywhere from maybe 70 to $100, but they compensated the first one and I have to reach out to them again saying, hey, I'm using y'all's ammo, recommended ammo. And I had the same problem again after maybe about six mags. That sucks. Anyway, um, I don't want to be all somber. Like, again, I don't normally do analytical breakdown reviews and don't talk about anything negative because for the most part, I love everything I have. And I don't do a, a breakdown, you know, tens of thousands around grand thumb test. It's just all about recreation. But to have it happen twice, I'm a little bummed out, man. I'm not going to lie. I really like this gun. Love Desert Eagle. So when this happens, a little heartbreaking, but... My responsibility to keep you guys updated. Uh, I'll reach out to them once more and say, hey man, this is the second time. Hopefully y'all fix it. And uh, if they do, I'll keep y'all posted and hopefully they'll get one that won't break. Maybe I'll try a different ammo too, but love the L5 Desert Eagle, but I felt the responsibility to tell y'all that this had happened. But that does it for this video. See you guys very, very soon on a more positive note. Take care.